and yet you didn't change fast enough to stop it? What the hell were you thinking? Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. When the documentary Cowspiracy was released in 2014, it brought a lot of attention to the environmental reasons for eating a plant-based diet. And although there are many critics out there, there have been two major events recently that basically show that the grave fears and predictions of many scientists are actually coming to fruition. We want to bring attention to these because it will hopefully wake a lot of people up to the urgency and severity of the situation and it also answers the incredibly annoying comments like, what do you care what somebody else eats? Yeah, it's not your business what I eat. Yeah. It's not your choice, <laughs> it's mine. Mm. Don't push your vegan diet onto me. You do you and I'll do me. <laughs> well, as much as we wish it was true, unfortunately we don't all live on individual planets. No, we live on one planet and all of our individual choices, especially what we eat, impact all other living beings, as well as the environment we collectively live in and rely on to sustain us all. So firstly, last month in September, we officially pushed atmospheric carbon levels past their dreaded 400 parts per million, and that's most likely permanent. A 2009 study in the journal Science found the last time in Earth's history when CO2 levels in the atmosphere were this high for a sustained period was between 15 and 20 million years ago, when temperatures were between 3 and 6 degrees Celsius warmer than today, and ice sheets had melted to the point where sea levels rose between 25 and 40 metres. But the most frightening of all of this is that we've managed to push atmospheric carbon levels permanently beyond this record level in only the last 66 years. Given that it's estimated that 65 to 80% of carbon dioxide released into the air remains in the atmosphere for 20 to 200 years, with the remainder remaining for much, much longer, and with the global population estimated to increase from 7.4 billion currently to 9.7 billion by 2050, and more than 11 billion by 2100, obviously we're only going to continue to drive levels up and thus average global temperatures as well. And what will just some of the effects of climate change be? Well, for starters, ancient glaciers are going to continue to melt, causing sea levels to rise. And as a result, by the year 2100, approximately 13 million people in the US are projected to lose their homes due to rising sea levels. In some parts of the world, such as the Pacific Ocean, that's already started to happen. And globally, it's estimated that the number of environmental refugees due to climate change will be between 200 million and 1 billion by 2050. One quarter of Earth's species could be on their way to extinction by 2050. And as a result, food chains are likely to become permanently unbalanced as apex predators and their prey begin to disappear. And then there's ocean acidification and coral bleaching, which leads right into the second environmental issue to recently gain mainstream awareness, the Great Barrier Reef. Outside magazine wrote an obituary style article declaring the Great Barrier Reef in Australia was dead. This went viral and received backlash from many scientists who said it's not dead, it's dying. And that's technically true, it's not officially dead. But what we can say is we were uh, snorkeling in the Great Barrier Reef back in 2009. Mm. We were absolutely shocked at how it looked nothing like the postcards. No, it was already so yeah. bleached. Yeah. So nine years later, we're really not surprised to hear that it's dying or nearly dead. Almost a quarter of the reef's coral has been killed just this year. And many scientists believe it could be too late for the rest. Basically, coral bleaches when the water it's in is too warm for too long. We stand to lose one of the most magnificent natural sites and the largest living structure in the world. And the reef is also home to 1,600 species of fish, 130 types of sharks and rays, and more than 30 species of whales and dolphins. It is one of the most complex ecosystems on the planet. When the coral dies, the entire ecosystem around it transforms. Fish that feed on the coral, use it as shelter or nibble on the algae that grows among it, die or move away. The bigger fish that feed on those fish disappear too. But the cascading effects don't stop there. Birds that eat fish lose their energy source and the island plants that thrive on bird droppings can be depleted. 
Many scientists are now saying it is almost too late to save it. Strong and immediate action is required to alleviate water pollution and stop the underlying cause, climate change. Now there is agreement that climate change is the greatest threat facing the Great Barrier Reef and other coral reefs around the world. But what do politicians and the media still primarily focus on for combating climate change? Fossil fuels. When in fact the leading cause of climate change is animal agriculture. So these two recent environmental events give us a small insight into what's to come. And although it sounds all terribly depressing, the answer is to start listening to people like Dr. Richard Oppenlander. His message is that we need to stop eating animals and their products now, not just reduce our consumption or take baby steps, because the situation is so urgent and dire. And as hard as that may seem, it's going to be a lot harder to live in a world that sees all the predicted mm. horrific effects of climate change come to full fruition. Yeah, that's right. Yes. What's going to be hard is facing the next generation and hearing them say, you knew this was happening. You brought me into this mess and yet you didn't change fast enough to stop it. What the hell were you thinking? We can't wait for the next generation to fix things. This is happening now, in our lifetime. This is our responsibility. That's right, we no longer live in a world where individuals have the luxury right. of choosing what's convenient for them, what they like, what they want. We're now going to play a few excerpts from Dr. Richard Oppenlander's presentation to the European Union Parliament before the screening of Cowspiracy in 2015. If there's still any doubt in your mind whatsoever as to whether or not everyone should be eating a 100% plant-based diet, we trust clips from this presentation will be a tipping point for you. In fact, five out of nine planetary boundaries or tipping points of our life support systems on Earth have already been passed. Five out of nine. And with the other four boundaries, we're exceeding their tolerance levels. And all nine boundaries are interconnected. As one collapses, the others will soon follow. Just during the past one hour, over 8 million domesticated land animals were slaughtered. Over 200 million sea animals were caught and killed for us to eat. And 114,000 tons of grain were fed to livestock we're still raising. But during that same one hour, over 350 children in the world died from starvation. These numbers should be zero. This then becomes a matter of ethics, doesn't it? It becomes a matter of social justice. The person sitting next to you who's eating a steak, pork, chicken, cheese, or fish is taking away the resources that could be spread more evenly, more efficiently, and used to support the life of perhaps 20 other people and thousands of other species while helping to mitigate climate change rather than causing it. In terms of solutions, this is not a time for us to take baby steps or for us to go meatless only on Mondays because we are on very real timelines that extend beyond self into society and future societies, human and non-human life. We're all connected. Eating only local food will not solve the problem because it's not the size of the farm or the miles traveled that causes the problem. It's the type of food being produced. And despite what the United Nations and other gold standard organizations are promoting, this sustainability issue will not be solved simply by advocating eating less meat, which is subjective, inconsistent with the magnitude and the urgency of the problem and perpetuates irresponsibility with every bite taken. And it mistakenly shifts the focus to seafood. Regarding our oceans, the damage we've done is irreversible in our lifetime. And today, there is no such thing as sustainable seafood. We think it's pretty clear after watching this that we have to regain perspective on where we should be directing our time and energy. Absolutely. Please help us spread this message far and wide by sharing this video on your social media and we have linked all the references for this video down below in the description. So thanks for watching guys. Leave your comments down below. We really want to hear your thoughts on this very important discussion. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And remember until next time that going vegan isn't even the most we can do. It's the absolute least we can do. See you next video. Bye guys. Then technically how halal is halal meat anyway, guys? Well, Dina, before we give you our thoughts, we're going to show you one of the best case scenarios for halal slaughter. And no, we're not going to show you the actual slitting 